What's that song? So hi, I've been invited to talk about the different monitoring possibilities in Studio A. I have a saying. Speakers are like women. I can't get enough of them. I think they're all beautiful. They all have something to say. So at Prairie Sun, I think we own between nine and ten sets of different types of speakers. In Studio A, we're talking about the ATC SCM 45s. We're talking about the TAD big boys over there in that corner. And then we're talking about a new set of speakers from Thomas Barefoot, Barefoot Monitors called the Footprints. So the different roles they play are the ATCs are what we would call a midfield, meaning that it's somewhere between my ears and the mid distance in the room. The TADs, which are big, you know, what we call big studio bombastic loud speakers. And by the way, these speakers came from the record plant in Sausalito. Um, that's where we originally got them. And they're really quite famous. And then we come to the Barefoots, and this is what we call a near field. We also own uh, a two-track tape machine, which has a mono three-inch speaker. And the concept to me, really good mixing means that your mixes are going to translate in any environment. We're now working with computer speakers. We play the mixes in our cars. But these are the reference monitors that we make final decisions on. But I just wanted to give you an overview of that. Not one set of speakers really says it all. They all have to work in a way. So to talk about the ATC company, very famous company. They're from England. We just came into possession of the SCM 45s. Uh, in February of 2018, I did actually own another pair in years past called the SCM25. The reason that we love the SCM45, this particular model, is because they have more whoopers. They have the classic, classic ATC mid-range, and they have a new tweeter. And these speakers are used by Joe Ciccarelli, are used by Mark Needham, all people that I've, I've admired and some of these people I've worked with. The other thing about the mid-range on an ATC is they're extremely revealing and the stereo soundscape, the front to back and the left to right sound that you get from them is really quite remarkable. Here, let's take a listen. got going in this mix with Sarah Baker on vocals is you can really hear the acoustic guitar in the left speaker. You can hear the Rhodes in the right. You can hear this left and right centered pan going on with my electric guitar. And so if you were to have headphones on or you were to listen to them, you would actually like feel hopefully you would transcend to this place where you forget that it's audio. You forget that we're mixing, that people are getting the emotional vibe. And these speakers are very, very revealing, and they're also warm. So we're very excited to own the ATC, and we really want to thank Brad for his help in letting us get them. The next set of speakers we want to talk about are the classic TAD. It's called the TSM-1. Now, the TSM-1s, which we got from the record plant, are very famous in that it's not so much you've got these big woofers. Look at the horn. The horn has, I don't know, 70 or 90 different veneers of wood. And then somebody goes, if they're from Japan, and they go in and they carve the horn in the wood so that you have this incredible uniformity. And when the mid-range and treble comes out of these horns, it's just a remarkable piece of craftsmanship. These get really loud. And we love really loud on occasion. Um, and they're also very accurate. So, for example, if you're working on a kick drum or working on a bass guitar, 
and you wanted to really be able to feel, well, am I getting this mid-range scoop right? Is there enough pedal on the kick drum? Um, is, it, is it woofy? With the tads, you really get the ability to surgically go in and feel like, in that world, how it's really sounding. They're very, they're very, very popular in here. Um, by the way, the tads are also a lot of times mounted in walls in the bigger studios, but because we're in a chicken coop, we just put our own stands up and they're not soffit mounted. So let's hear a little bit. Uh, let's hear a little bit about the tads and a little bit. Open up, this is a ray. I want to get it through to you. You're not alone. So that, that's a pretty good example of what the tads can do. Um, I'm not supposed to do this, but sometimes we open the door up and we go out in the parking lot and it might be known that we turn them up really loud and from 100 feet away, we, we get to listen to our mix because we want to see how's it translating on a big old tarmac parking lot. I'm just kind of kidding, but I'm kind of not kidding. All right, so the next set of speakers that we're going to talk about are this new set of barefoot speakers called the Footprint. And I'm using the Footprint very interestingly in the mode of a near field monitor. And I've got it, they have this setting right here where I can simulate a hi-fi speaker, I can simulate a flat speaker, I can simulate an NS10 or a Q. So what's very interesting about the Barefoot Company is we also own their M27, which is the Butch Vig, very classic monitor. We also own the M26, which is really popular because it has this extra mid-range tweeter in it. And then this is their new um, lower cost speaker system called the Footprint which is very, very popular. I think they've sold 500 pairs in less than a year. I think since January they introduced them. So let's listen to a little bit of that. A broken heart, isolated and so what's the concept of a near field monitor like an NS10, which by the way, we own two pairs of them, is what I want to know is at low volume, how are my balances? Is my vocal too loud? Can I hear the bass? Is the snare too loud? Are the background vocals washed out by reverbs? For example, here, let's, let's listen a little bit here. That's the cue. You hear us all? So imagine that would be a three inch mono speaker, right? If I put my board in mono, there you go. Or what we just started with, the NS10, boom. This is flat, which is a great sounding monitor, this by the way. I recommend this, this, this speaker. It and then we go to hi fi. Back to flat. Back to NS10 simulation. Back to Oratone Q. So, isn't this fun? I mean, come on. Come on. If you love gear, we all love gear. That's that, why we'd be watching this video. So, to kind of coalesce what we've talked about, when you get into a mixing session, we're here 8, 10, 12, 14 hours a day. And so, you know, studio monitors can induce ear fatigue. Um, we're on a new program at Prairie Sun. We're using a lot more SPL meters to try and get our monitoring levels down because if you really fatigue your ears too much, you're not going to be that accurate. So we just feel very blessed that we have this workshop. You've got this board with all these modules. You've got different sets of speakers. You've got an amazing array of outboard gear. And you've got a team and a bunch of buds we're going to listen to your work and give you feedback. I will tell you one thing I have learned is that 
at the end of the day, and I think I really killed it and I got this awesome mix, I leave it set up, I come back in the morning, I use earplugs in the morning, and I fast with my ears until I come to work. I pull the earplugs out, I come in, I bring up the NS, not the, yeah, the, um, the uh, NS10s, and I listen to it that quiet so I can barely hear it because my ears are virgin at that time of the morning. I don't believe my own press at night when I went to bed. And it's amazing how you'll find all these small increments of accuracy of what you're trying to get. So that I just wanted to share that, how I use monitors in my life. What's that song? Okay, that is kind of what we do.